The Plasma Physics Division is one of 18 research divisions at the Naval Research Lab that focuses on plasmas, which are the fourth state of matter. Currently, the division has a really broad portfolio of research. Everything from fusion research, we're doing research into pulse power and high energy uh, beams, plasma processing for advanced electronics, to the plasmas that exist uh, in the ionosphere and magnetosphere of the Earth. Both commercial and military systems and their day-to-day -day operations are more and more reliant on space systems. So the Navy has this vested interest in making sure that we can always communicate to those systems and that they're protected from the natural environment or artificially created things. So with the space chamber, we can generate magnetospheric and ionospheric plasmas under scaled conditions where we can conduct repeatable, well-controlled experiments that are a cost-effective alternative to launching satellites and sounding rockets and making measurements in space. SPADE is a space diagnostic that was first started out as a laboratory diagnostic where we're trying to measure background plasma parameters that are important as inputs to space weather models, but in addition can measure uh, differential charging that can occur in spacecraft. So this has been tested in our laboratory here in the space chamber and now it's going to go up on uh, as part of the SCPH-6 uh, pallets, a collection of instruments going to the International Space Station where we'll be able to test this diagnostic in a relevant environment. The NRL is, is, is a great place to do research. Scientists here are given free reign to pursue any kind of idea they have um, if, it has, if they can show relevance to not even today's Navy, but the Navy 20 years from, from now. The Matrix Lab itself is a very unique facility here at NRL. What we've been working on for a number of years now is bringing in a source where we can have very high intensity laser pulses that range all the way from the X-ray all the way out to the uh, terahertz regime. At the same time, that's synchronized to uh, femtoseconds with particle beams, so that's ions and electron beams um, that allow us to do some really unique pump probe analysis of things like plasmas or other different materials that would be useful for the Navy. The Nike laser at NRL is the world's highest energy XMR laser, the world's deepest UV high energy laser. It's a gas laser as opposed to glass laser, so it also has the potential for uh, high rep rate operation. The, the facility basically focuses on two areas. There's the target issues, which are all the plasma physics and high energy density physics that we like to, uh, that really the facility is devoted to studying. On the other side is the driver itself, which is the krypton fluoride laser. So not only are we doing plasma physics experiments, we're also doing laser development work. The XMR lasers natively have, have a wider uh, spectrum uh, than uh, high energy lasers that have been used in the past. This technology seems to show large prom premise in, in uh, help, helping suppress these deleterious target instabilities. Our research with um, pulse power driven electron beams and ion beams is uh, to support the Department of Defense and Department of Energy in various missions. Our bread and butter for our branch is the simulation of nuclear weapons effects. So we try to make the electron beams or the ion beams um, cleaner, better, stronger, faster to do the right mission. Our mercury accelerator goes up to about 8 million volts, 8 megavolts, but the current is 200 kiloamps. So we store up energy over uh, many minutes time scale and discharge it over uh, a few nanoseconds time scale. Another piece of the work that we do for electron beams and ion beams is to take x-rays, flash x-rays. We uh, generate very bright flashes of x-rays to take um, photographs of something moving, a dynamic material interaction. So explosives driving materials, and we take pictures and try to understand the physics of what's going on. In the plasma applications section, we look at uh, applications where low temperature plasmas can be used to, to modify or process materials that are used in next generation devices. They can be low power or high power electronics. They can be used for sensors. Those materials can be used as coatings. Those coatings can be protective or those coatings can be adaptive in nature. And, and those uh, various devices and coatings are typically used to advance the needs of our warfighter. Science by nature is pretty organic, so it's sometimes hard to, to predict where science will go, but what I think the division will do is use those creative ideas and innovative ideas to, to continue to address uh, serious problems that we have. Plasma physics has, uh, in the last 50, 60 years, has become a 
a, a discipline that touches everyone's lives. From advanced electronics to space weather that impacts our ability to communicate and, and navigate. So what I'm hoping to see in, in plasma physics is it becomes even more pervasive uh, in the quest for uh, new knowledge, new applications in this endless frontier of science.